Successfully accomplishing an aircraft carrier landing takes a high-performing team. Navies all over the world are highly trained in the art of landing on what can only be described as a postage stamp in comparison to most runways. A carrier landing is similar to a controlled crash. The touchdown is enough to destroy most other airplanes. Landing on a flight deck is one of the most difficult things a Navy pilot will ever do. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at how these emergency landings are done. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is the surface from which its aircraft take off and land, essentially a miniature airfield at sea. In November 1910, the American scout cruiser USS Birmingham launched the first aircraft ever to take off from a ship, and two months later, an aircraft was landed on an improvised flight deck built onto the armored cruiser USS Pennsylvania. On the 2nd of August 1917, while performing trials, Squadron Commander Edwin Harris Dunning landed a Sopwith Pup successfully on board the flying off platform of HMS Furious, becoming the first person to land an aircraft on a moving ship. However, on his third attempt, a tire burst as he attempted to land, causing the aircraft to go over the side, resulting in his death. During the Cold War era, numerous innovations were introduced to the flight deck of an aircraft carrier. The angled flight deck, invented by Dennis Campbell of the Royal Navy, was one prominent design feature that drastically simplified aircraft recovery and deck movements, enabling landing and launching operations to be performed simultaneously rather than interchangeably. It also better handled the higher landing speeds of jet-powered aircraft. Early landing arrangements relied on the low speed and landing speed of the era's aircraft, being simply caught by a team of deckhands in a fairly hazardous arrangement. But these became impractical as heavier aircraft with higher landing speeds emerged. Therefore, an arrangement of arrestor cables and tail hooks soon became the favored approach. To land on the flight deck, each plane needs a tail hook, which is exactly what it sounds like, an extended hook attached to the plane's tail. The pilot's goal is to snag the tail hook on one of four arresting wires, which are sturdy cables woven from high tensile steel wire. The arresting wires are stretched across the deck and are attached on both ends to hydraulic cylinders below deck. If the tail hook snags an arresting wire, it pulls the wire out, and the hydraulic cylinder absorbs the energy to bring the plane to a stop. The arresting wire can stop a 54,000-pound aircraft traveling 150 miles per hour in only two seconds in a 315-foot landing area. There are four parallel arresting wires spaced about 50 feet apart to expand the target area for the pilot. Pilots are aiming for the third wire, as it's the safest and most effective target. They never shoot for the first wire because it's dangerously close to the edge of the deck. If they come in too low on the first wire, they could easily crash into the stern of the ship. It's acceptable to snag the second or fourth wire, but for a pilot to move up through the ranks, he or she has to be able to catch the third wire consistently. To pull off this incredible trick, the pilot needs to approach the deck at exactly the right angle. The landing signals officers help guide the plane in through radio communication as well as a collection of lights on the deck. As soon as the plane hits the deck, the pilot will push the engines to full power instead of slowing down to bring the plane to a stop. This may seem counterintuitive, but if the tail hook doesn't catch any of the arresting wires, the plane needs to be moving fast enough to take off again and come around for another pass. This is called a bolter. The landing runway is tilted at a 14-degree angle to the rest of the ship, so bolters like this can take off from the side of the ship instead of plowing into the planes on the other end of the deck. Prior to the introduction of the angled flight deck, two systems were used in addition to deck cables to keep landing aircraft from running into parked aircraft further forward on the flight deck, the barrier and the barricade. If the aircraft tailhook failed to catch a wire, its landing gear would be caught by a 3 to 4 foot high net known as the barrier. If the aircraft caught a wire upon touchdown, the barrier could be quickly lowered to allow aircraft to taxi over it. The final safety net was the barricade. The barricade is normally in a stowed condition and rigged only when required. A little like a long tennis net, the barricade is designed to catch an aircraft while it's rolling at more than 100 miles an hour. 
To rig a barricade, it is stretched across the flight deck between stanchions, which are raised from the flight deck. The webbing consists of upper and lower horizontal loading straps joined to each other at the ends. The barricade webbing is raised to a height of approximately 20 feet. It then engages the wings of the landing aircraft, wherein energy is transmitted from the barricade webbing through the purchase cable to the arresting engine. Barricade engagements are rare, as tailhooks are designed to be extremely failsafe. Even so, flight deck crews must train regularly to get them set up within minutes of being notified. Barriers are no longer in use, although ground-based arresting gear are sometimes called barriers. Barricades are still in use aboard carriers, but they are only rigged and used in emergencies. When it comes to being the heaviest and largest aircraft to land on an aircraft carrier, the award goes to the C-130 Hercules. The United States Navy performed the test in 1963, with Lieutenant James Flatley III as their pilot. The Hercules was a hulking four-engine C-130 turboprop, one of the most versatile military planes designed to take off and land on rough runways. Flatley performed 29 touch-and-go landings, increasing the weight of the cargo throughout the test. He had never flown a four-engine plane before these tests. After a short training period, he was able to achieve the incredible feat of successfully landing and taking off from the aircraft carrier without the need for the emergency barricade. What do you think of this incredible Navy equipment? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.